Love 15. Well, you can straight away see the very difficult positions. Where Sri Yontek's really trying to be up on the baseline and dictate. That's what she does, no matter who she plays against. And Soribos Toma already getting pushed back a couple of metres back. The Perth sign. I didn't have a screaming 15, forehand uh, down the line passing shot on my first game bingo card for this <laughs> match from Sara Saribes Tormo. Well, she anticipated well here. And I think for Sviontek, don't take anything away from Saribes Tormo and that reaction, but didn't quite use a peripheral vision there to see where Saribes Tormo was, rushed a little bit, took her eye off the ball and didn't go into the open court. So you won't see Sarubis Tomo change that court position. She's not going to be on the baseline. That's not the way that she plays anyway and doesn't take the ball as early as some players. So the, the, the key for her will be how much depth she can keep. Pace as much as she can, but depth and heaviness as well. Yeah, that's a good serve. 40, 30. Completely took pace off, 149 k's an hour. But the way that she just cut around that ball to get the angle that short in the service box was perfection. That'll do nicely for Iga Schwiontek. First game on the board. And it's shots like that that are kind of mid-court, but even a metre behind the service line that she just deals with. I don't think there's anyone in the world that takes care of that mid-court ball as good as she does. It's because she's got great footwork, gets herself in a great position to hit the ball every single time. And also, she just doesn't overplay. She makes those shots, but it's ruthless with the way that she doesn't give you time, doesn't allow you to breathe. She reminds me a little bit of Alcaraz when he does that as well. Well, that's another pretty uh, flattering comparison, isn't it? Yeah. Steffi Graf and Carlos Alcaraz. Yes. <laughs> you know you're doing something right. Representing Team Spentrosen.
15 love. Maybe just early on here, a couple of uh, balls like that that have flown off the racket of Sviontek. The first match she played in the evening, that was a night session. So the conditions in the evening just a, a little slower, a little heavier. Uh, in the day with a little bit of heat, ball can fly a little bit. Net for service. short ball as soon as she sees it she, she actually sh sees it so early 30, but then 15. to actually get in the right position even when she's hitting it down the line have a look at this she's already up there she cuts off the angle shoulder and hip rotation stays through the shot and the biggest thing is she actually rips it but still has the margin for error and the trajectory over the net Tough well there, didn't she? Because mm. there were a few shorter balls yes. for Shante to attack. They sure were. But she moves so well and anticipates well, also uses her leg so well when she gets pushed out into the corners and has to come back also. Wow. <laughs> I love an inside out backhand, Elena. It's my yeah. favorite shot. Well, when your, 40, coach, when your coach tells you try and take the ball early, that's what the, that's what <laughs> that's what the coach <laughs> means. But Serubas Tomo, he she almost didn't even land yet for this of this already came back. And Serubas Tomo is quick. Have a look at this. She split step, but the ball was already on her side of the court. That tells you how early Sviontek took that backhand. Wow. Net for subs. Oh. And again. Well, if she wasn't wearing a, a baseball cap, you'd be able to see her eyes light up with that when yes. she sees that shorter ball, wouldn't you? It's. Um... But it's the intent uh, uh, mentally and the focus to go, okay, I'm really looking for that. And you can see that. Look at that. So she takes it right on top of the bounce, but it's because she's ready and commits to do that. The body weight is always going forward, whether she, she's having a hard ball come at her, she always holds a ground, or whether she has an easier one. A rare miss. 
but <laughs> the right kind of miss. But you would go, yes, that's a good error. And your opponent will be aware, oh, OK, again, she went for that. So <laughs> as an opponent, you feel like it's just all coming at you. You have no space, no time to, to really breathe. So that will be in the time, oh, sorry, in the head of Cerebus Toma. such a good point you make, uh, Yelena. I, I guess from Sara Suribes Tormo's perspective with those areas, you're thinking, well, well that's, that's nice. Th thanks for the gift, but I yeah. know you're not going to miss the next one. Yeah, yeah. And just in general, over the course, if you look at, you always have to look at a course of a match, two, three sets, potentially an hour and a half, two, maybe even longer. It's also when someone's standing uh, and has a, a return, attacking return position, especially off a second serve. And even if it doesn't work early on in matches, I always say, you know, you're sending a message to your opponent, what your intent is. And that, that is, I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to attack here if you don't hit a good enough shot. So it really creates a lot of pressure consistently on the opponent to have to do that. And look, she doesn't have the biggest weapon, Sara Cerebes Tormo. She does rely on drawing errors from her opponent. And so far, she has, she has drawn a few. So... We're on even terms here. There's something else Love to consider 15. that Sarah Sarubas Tormas spoke about in her press conference. Is that not only does she have a huge deal of respect for Sviantec, but She's also just going to stay as long as she can out there on court. So if that means hitting 20 ball rallies, 25 ball rallies, she is committed to doing that. So any free points that she can get is a win. Surubes Tormo there. Brianna, you're right Love there on 13. that baseline where Sarah is from here as well. She looks like she's doing so much physical work with how much court she's covering already. We know she's quick and can cover a lot of court, but got to give her a lot of credit for that because she's just everywhere at the moment. Well, the game is physical as it is, isn't it? She puts so much effort into her shots and she's not a player that, well, she's not going to blow Sviantec off the court. So her, her goal is to wear her down as much as she can. And if that means running down every ball. If that means running well, down every single ball, that's what she will do. And yeah, it's going to test her physically. 15, 13. She'll take forehand. That was that last win up. So a lot of physicality. It's a bit more of an extreme grip there. More of a Western grip. Bigger swing as well. And it's something I think with time she'll probably try and shorten a little bit. Well, a monster forehand, but a, a very loose volley. Just for context. 14, I'll just get back to um, that forehand, but just want to quickly have a look at the Shriontek serve. Look at that. So that's the abbreviated motion with the right arm. It used to go all the way down, almost touching the ground. She gets good extension, good leg drive. But what that does is it's more in sync when both arms go up together. It used to be a lot more mechanical. Let's see if it can get her out of trouble here. Two break points. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, the serve forehand combo, that's uh, meat and potatoes for Shiontek, but still 14. one more break point to face. Yes. I'll get back to the serve again. Right here. So she goes straight up with both arms together. Right there. So she can go shoulder over shoulder. And she's got more extension. Great leg drive. So what that does, it keeps it more simple. It used to be further down. So right arm would go first, then the left. Then she would have to quickly bring the right. So more things can go wrong. This is simple. This is in sync gives her the opportunity to still have the shoulder and hip uh, rotation Dutch as well. More more body parts moving in harmony with one another. Yes, the more you can be in sync and keep it simple and go with both arms together, both the, the throwing arm and then the one that's got the racket, less things can go wrong, especially under pressure. It gives your ball toss uh, more consistent as well. Well, that's a rare point. loose error from Cerebes Tormo, and that is danger avoided for Igor Svantec. We remain on serve. She leads 2-1. Team Poland leads two games to one. So on the change to the service motion, would you expect that to have a bigger impact on the first serve or the second serve? Because if there is or has been a weakness to the Shantek game, a relative weakness, that is, I guess it has been the second serve. Yeah, I don't know uh, whether you could go to call it a weakness, but a weaker, let's say, something that can definitely improve. And, and uh, I think that they're looking at ways to also, for me, uh, get more power out of her serve. Because if you look at the rest of her game, it's it does have more power. It is a lot more dynamic. Więcej można puścić, prawda? Natomiast tutaj mówię, cały czas nastawienie, żeby ten krok od razu zrobić do przodu, jak jest wyższa piłka, krótsza, żebyś miała ją tu. It's the mark of a champion, isn't it, Boyana? That uh, no matter how good they are, no matter how far ahead of the rest of the pack, they never rest on their laurels. Not at all. And Shviantek, she loves the feedback, doesn't she? She also gives it back to her coach. And she found a way to get herself out of that last game, facing two break points. Time. And I think this, game, this match for her will be all about making adjustments because she's up against a player that throws in a lot of variety. Sarah Cerebus Torma, she has the heavy forehand, she has the slice backhand. She doesn't give Shriantek the pace, so Shriantek's having to create that herself. So it's a good start so far for both plays. That is an excellent point from Shviontek Love because she went with the depth, then she went with the angle, and to get low to that slice, Sarah Soribustoma has an excellent slice. She really knifes it, keeps it low. Shviontek, that was a 
just wonderful athleticism, gets the back knee almost touching the ground. And I like that she made that way forward, coming to the net. always going to be the banker, isn't it, the forehand? Love 13. And here's a look at the Shriontek forehand. That was actually that last one. Look at that wide base, how low she gets to the ground. She does have the extreme grip, but she gets under and over the ball. It's a tiny bit of a bigger swing, but I actually, uh, for me, they've shortened that compared to two years ago, and there's a reason for that. So why, why, why they're trying to, I think, shorten that uh, backswing is when she plays players like Sabalenka, like Rybakina, and even Ostapenko, who she's never beaten, that hard and flat ball into the forehand or through the middle of the court forehand, she gets stuck hitting it late. And it can fly on her and she starts to shank it a little bit. And that's if you've got a more extreme grip and a bigger swing, that can happen. So grip is hard to change, but you can shorten the swing. By the way, we're not saying it's a weakness <laughs> by any means. Relative it, weakness. It's, it's, you know, we're talking about a couple of percent here and there. <laughs> Area for improvement. Yes, additions. <laughs> yeah, we're talking cherries on icings on already very nice cakes here. But, uh, Surubes Tormo doing well. She's loved 30 in this game. A couple of points back to back. For context on the, the forehand grip, that very extreme grip, any other players that play with a grip that extreme in the women's game on the forehand? Well, her opponent, Sarah Subrish Toma, has a bit more of an extreme grip as well and, and a bigger swing also. And Coco Goff. Let's not forget that. And that is something that she's working on as well, adjusting to be able to get the arm and the wrist through quicker and not get caught late on a faster, deeper ball. Thirty forty. Is that the toss there? That is a little bit of the toss that's too low. When it's that low, you can't um, hit up and get the uh, safety, but it's also not to the left enough to be able to get the kick and safety, go from left to right. But that's also Iga Sviontek aura, what we were talking about, the pressure where she's standing, and you know that returns coming back if you don't hit an excellent second serve. So another break point. And another loose error from Shontek. Those are getting yes. up on her a bit, aren't they? Yeah, see that one a little bit there? She just fell on her back just a tiny bit, bit when sometimes the ball's a little deeper. Have a look at that. See how she lifts up there? Because she's trying to get time on a bigger swing. And that sometimes happens. So they're trying to, I think, shorten that swing, but also the follow through with a more extreme grip. It's tougher. So you've got to follow through all the way instead of coming off the ball. Back-to-back -back forehand errors from the world number one. It's definitely a, a messier performance than what we saw a couple of days ago. You need to remember, too, Sara Saribas Torres had... Torres had two break points in the previous game when Triantec was serving. So had she consolidated there, she'd be serving for a 3-1 lead in this first set. Net for serves. Oh. 
Well, there was a long gap yeah, between serves, wasn't there? I was worried that a double fault was coming, but not so. This is a Two very uncharacteristically loose performance so far from the world number one. And Sara Cerebus Tormo just doing her thing. Yeah, give a lot of credit to Cerebus Tormo here because she hasn't made hardly any unforced errors. Is really working hard physically, staying in these points, keeping the depth as well. And this height of ball, when you're playing during the day and you can throw it up and get the top spin and the heaviness, just like Sviontek struggled a little bit on that last one, you've got to get on top of the bounce or you've got to go all the way back, which is not something Sviontek's going to do. So physically, that's hard for your opponent. Hey. Oh. <laughs> what a combo. Wow, placement perfection on both the serve and the forehand. But also uh, have a look at where Sriontek was here. She was back behind the baseline. Look straight away the steps that she makes to get the right hip out of the way. Perfection. These little ballet steps. Well, and again, they're moving up to the short ball, but again, the forehand flying. I think it's the conditions a little bit for her because she played that first match uh, in the evening, the night session, that tiny bit slower when you're now playing in the day, that's what she's missing by. It's not a lot. It's just flying a little bit on her. I think it's also a little bit of... I don't know if doubt is the term to use, but I'll use it anyway, just because she's missed a couple of unforced errors early on in this first set, and then she's having to create the play a lot more, and Saruba's Tormes isn't really giving her a whole lot, and those errors are creeping, so obviously it creates a bit of doubt. The confidence drops a little bit. Okay, that is a 14 unforced error to Iga Sviontek. It's the match we were expecting in terms of it being on Sviontek's racket. It's just an awful lot more errors from her than we were expecting. And an awful lot more break points for Sara Saribes Tormo. Once again, she has 1540 on the world number one serve. Can she take her chances this time? Again, the, the serve forehand combo there, getting her out of jail. 13, there was 14. a right idea, though, from Cerebus Tommy. You can see she's uh, very purposefully just trying to hit with a lot of top spin. This one just falls short, though, a little bit. Had too much air, too much time. Still, though, testing Sviontek. Are you going to keep making those and, and go for it? Because she's hit a few unforced errors. But one more break point to face here for Sviontek. also interesting in Yelena maybe you could shed some light but yes. when you've played someone and you've beaten them comfortably on two occasions you know that your opponent for example Sara Cerebus Tormes is going to come at you she's gunning for this win so I just wonder if it's just that little bit of added pressure from Shvin Tech also knowing that she has to get the win on the board for Poland that's just starting to play in her mind a little bit
Just getting back to your point, Brianna, it's also when you've played someone twice and you've beat, beaten them very comfortably, you feel like, oh, you know, I've got this and, and it's someone that I can beat and it, it kind of suits my game style. So sometimes you almost maybe, doesn't matter how focused you are and intense, you come out maybe perhaps a little more relaxed. And what I mean by relax, maybe you lose a little bit of that focus and concentration yes. than what you would usually have if you've had a tougher match with someone. I do love this from Cerebez Tormo. Sometimes Shvantec has the answers, but she's asking the questions, isn't she? She's kind of goading Shvantec. <laughs> it's good fun. She's hitting the cross-court forehand well, uh, backhand uh, rather, which is from Tech. Mm. Certainly uh, the last few points. It's, look, it's a very consistent shot and just technically pretty perfect. Nothing can go wrong with that technically, even under pressure, because she's got the right grips, nice wide base, but also the shoulder and hip rotation. And she always follows through to the target, no matter what shot comes at her, whether it's a slower one or a faster one. Compact backswing. Lapped up the yeah. shorter ball, didn't Tim she? Water. Enough of this moonballing, says Iga Shiontek. That is a good hold from 15-40 down she and Team, team Poland lead 3-2. So, well, Iga Shiontek and Thomas Rodorowski have a little conflower at the change of ends. We're going to show you Rotnest Island. Yelena, you were there just a few days ago. Ferry ride away from Perth? Yes, only 19 kilometres away from Perth, uh, in fact. And uh, it was phenomenal. I went on Christmas Eve and, yes, I got the quokka selfie. I had to chase it around for an hour, but it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going uh, on Saturday. Oh, are you? And I'm going to dedicate my day to the perfect quokka selfie. OK. It's, it's a, tip, a lifelong though. ambition. I have a tip for you. Tell me. Can't get it too early. They're still sleeping. They come out after about 1 or 2 p.m. Play the long game. Yep. Very much appreciate that tip. I, I'm, I'll sleep on Rockest Island if I need to. I'm getting that <laughs> quokka selfie. Look, I didn't know that either. I heard from my wonderful tour guide that I heard on the day. They come out more in the evening. That's when they uh, are most active and you know they feed, then they go to sleep. And you won't see them uh, at you know, 9, 10, 11 a.m. There are none out there, but then after Time. 1 or 2 p.m., they start to come out. These are my kind of animals. <laughs> they like a lion, nice meal and a snooze. Yeah, watch this space for the perfect quokka selfie. It's coming, I'm telling you. <laughs> a lot of tennis to be played here in Perth before that, though. And this is, this is a good match so far. It's pretty fascinating. Not quite the match that people were expecting. Has Sviontek found her game?
point construction. It was very deliberate there from Sriante. Had everything from the depth and a couple of angles as well. And what she's trying to do with the angles, which is just perfect tactically, is because Sarah Silverstrom is a couple meters back behind the baseline, she's making her come forward or cut off the angle, not just move vertically. That's what you have to do, and that's hard. So you also open up a lot more court, and be, then you have that open court to hit the next ball into. Film tech now. I was wondering why she didn't take the overhead uh, out of no, the air, but it turned out to be a good decision. Yeah, it was too deep, and also she's on that side with the sun now out. But there was a couple of forehands here in this point where she put a little bit of extra top spin there, didn't quite hit it as flat. And that's the adjustment, what I said earlier, two games ago, that I think she'll have to make because the balls are flying a little bit. And she's made that here. And this is also that uh, top uh, player and champion mentality. When they get out of a couple of break points, not just in one, but two games, then you know they're really going to dig deep in that next game, put the pressure on you and really try and break. And that's what's happening here. Yeah, pressure very much on. Three Sviantec break points. <laughs> well, I think she was expecting an out call on the serve there. Not quite sure why she didn't move to the forehand. Of Shontek. I mean, she'd have struggled to get it back anyway, such was the depth of the return. But that's in the past. Shviontek has the break. It does seem like this is turning into the match that we were expecting. And you can see what the difference is at the moment with Shriantek having a break point, three break point opportunities and consolidating right from the very start. Whereas Sarah Saribas Tormo has had break points in the last two service games of Iga Shriantek and hasn't yet been able to consolidate. You really need to take those opportunities when they arise. No, no. no. Well, that's unplayable. Seems to have found her range, hasn't, hasn't she, in the last two games around Tech? Uh, uh, what she's doing also very well compared to two games ago is some of these rallies, extended rallies, yes, yeah, she's still aggressive, but not going off the winner of the first or second shot. A couple of times she stayed in the rally, built it, and was patient. That's where she's been able to cut down on the unforced errors. See, that one right there, a lot safer, better trajectory. And we'll just have a quick look here at the Sviontek rally placement. And pretty even to both sides. But what she's doing is she's avoiding the middle. There's nothing going through the middle. And usually she'd do it and, and have at least 20 to 30% of shots going through the middle against most players. And what she's doing with that is she's straight away trying to open up the court and get on the front foot and create those angles.
Yeah, that was a very illustrative graphic, that one, actually. It feels like there's just no wasted shots no. with Shante. No, and look, you have some players where you go through the middle and they struggle with that. It's hard to create angles, but Sarah Cerebestom is not one of those because she really moves well and has good footwork. And Shriontek's very deliberately playing this aggressive game of going to the corners and spreading the court. Fourteen, fifteen. Oh, another patient yeah. rally construction from out. Shriontek. A shake of the racket. She is in control here. 5 2. The important leads, 5 games for 2. Watch and please. Yeah, you use the word deliberate just then, Yelena. She does seem like. She doesn't do anything without a purpose in life or on a tennis court anywhere, Riga Shriontek. Everything is deliberate. It is, and, and even if you watch her uh, uh, warm-ups, I, I go down to everything that players do, and, and Novak Djokovic is very similar, and, and we've had an opportunity here to watch that quite a bit as well behind the scenes. There is a purpose and a plan and a goal to everything they do. And because she's hitting so many winners, you can some, sometimes underestimate the amount of physical work she's putting in yes. on a tennis court. But these, all of these tiny little footsteps, it's well, You can hear them busy. as well on hard court like that. Yeah, the squeaking, it's a giveaway, isn't it? Ona daleko stoi, więc ten szybki serwis też nie robi dużo. Dlatego przede wszystkim docin ostro, ale zawsze z docięciem. I... I'm going to try and use a little bit of my um, Polish knowledge there. I was hoping someone would, oh, that really? wasn't me. Okay, well, you were, putting, you were putting that pressure on me, <laughs> so I thought I'd better come up with something. Uh, Thomas was just saying there uh, that Sarah uh, was standing quite far back, including on the return. So he said to Iga, still go for your serve, but go more for the angles. So expose that angle, don't go straight at her. And that's what we've seen. She's served that so well on the juice side. We've seen her use the slider a lot more than usual. Go, go more for placement than pace. What an appointment he was, by the way, yeah. for Iga Świątek, Thomas Witorowski. She was already a Grand Slam champion when she brought him into the camp. point but still an aggressive one right on top of the baseline Iga not giving Number up 15. any court position have a look at the Shriontek return hit point right here that's both on the first and the second serve I mean that's right on top of the baseline and even half a meter inside the baseline just incredible because you take the ball, the ball so early that way take time away from your opponent and uh, over time that is an enormous amount of pressure She's such a threat, isn't she? <laughs> Lurking on that baseline. Nice idea, 
but uh, it had to be good. And it wasn't good Love enough 30. from Sara Saribes to almost more danger for her here on serve. Having to work so hard for her <laughs> points and yeah, <laughs> that drop shot, maybe even not the best time to do it. She was just inside the baseline, it's a little bit too far back, but it's so hard. She did everything right in that point and just couldn't win it. Probably would have won it against a, a, a lot of players out there. She knew how good it had to yeah, be, didn't she? Yeah. Oh. There's, there's your return hit point. <laughs> That's what it does. And she actually didn't even hit it as hard Lovely. as it looked. It was more how early she took it. Short back swing. She is all over her now, Iga Svantec. Cerebus Tormo struggling to find ways to win points. Three set points for the pole. Good serve there. Mistimed return, a rare one from Svantec. One down, two to go. She first four games from the world number one, but from but two all, to two. she took charge. Six games to two, Iga Svantec takes the first set. And Boyana, Yelena, all this talk of taking the ball early, you might watch Iga Svantec and think, well, of course that's the thing to do on a tennis court. But the thing about it is it is so difficult to actually do, right? Absolutely. As we quickly just have a look at these statistics uh, in the first set and uh, that first serve percentage, uh, pretty good even from Iga Shiontek there, 59%. Sarasu is still at 84% but struggling to win the amount of points needed behind the first serve even. And that's because of the magnificent returning from Shiontek. And uh, forehand winners there in the end for Shiontek, 13. That was a lot lower earlier in the set. And now she's in the positive with the winners compared to the unforced errors as we let, have a look at some of these highlights here. And it was all on the record of, of Iga. That's what she likes to do, likes to dictate and control. Even though in the first couple of games there were some unforced errors, she tried to finish off some points too early. But what she does so good is make those adjustments and the awareness of going, OK, I have to work a little bit harder for my points here, brain it in a little bit, bigger targets. But still, she has the ability to have this controlled aggression work the point around we saw a lot of it going into the corners exposed or trying to expose the sidelines as much as much as she could and in the end a great set from Shiontek great to see those mid-match adjustments the mark of a champion and there are just so many other players top players even Elena that simply don't have the skill set to take the ball as early no. as Iga Svantec does. No, and, and, and sometimes people think we're taking the ball early. Oh, it's hitting the ball hard as well, and that's not what it's about. Taking Sing that ball early, it's more about taking time away from your opponent. Can you add, obviously, pace to it? Absolutely, she does both. But to do it consistently Simple in matches, so. whether you're under pressure or whether there are balls coming at you with pace or different height or or not, is you've got to be physically very prepared. You've got to be very fit. And your mindset consistently has to be, I'm going to play this kind of tennis, even if it doesn't work.
Yeah, those loopy balls were uh, causing Iga Shontek a bit of trouble in the first set, but not now. Well, one of the things that stood out for me, or the main thing that stood out for me in that first set, was the 15 unforced errors that came off the record of Shontek all happened in the first four games when she faced break points in two of her service games. And it was almost from 3-2, she made that commitment to herself. She made the commitment that she was going to zone in. No more unforced errors. She capitalised on the break at 3-2 and then just ran away with the set and there were no unforced errors. If anything, there were just winners. What a skill that is, Boyana, to just decide to stop hitting unforced errors. All right, I'll, I'll stop doing that now. Well, you could just tell in the rally. She was working the ball. She was willing to hang, hang tough. And one clear example was that drop shot attempt from Sarah Saribas Tormo. The drop shot that Saribas Tormo attempted and missed was a sign to me that she tried everything in the rally, and that was her last option. And when she couldn't make that, it was almost a sign to say, "Look." I'm not too sure what else to do. Yeah, not a challenge, just a replay there. Of course, we've got electronic line calling, so all calls are set in stone, but sometimes players like uh, peace of mind of the replay. First yeah, one of those we've seen from Shiontek, and effective it is, just like the rest of her game. First game second you talk about that very deliberate uh, mindset of going, OK, I'm not going to miss here anymore. Yeah, and it's one thing to say that, but it's one thing to know why it's happening. And that's where, for me, Shiontek is ahead of also, uh, I would even say, anyone, even uh, the other top five and top ten players in the world. And whether that's uh, you having a plan with a coach or figuring it out on your own, it doesn't really matter, is where she actually realised, OK, I actually need to put more top spin here. My balls are flying, I'm going for too much. And uh, she put a little bit more height and shape on that ball. So we quickly have a look at the Tormo forehand. So look at the big backswing, look at the wrist as well, extreme grip. And she actually falls back a little bit. But also with that, sometimes that was actually a pretty good one there. She her, her elbow breaks a little bit and she comes off the ball too soon. And you can't afford to do that with a more extreme grip. That's why some of her forehands fall short as the rally goes on and on. A forehand built on a clay court? Yes, a forehand built on a clay. But you can work on that, and she can get depth on the forehand. It's how does she do it consistently. So look at where she's standing as well. You know she, you're going to play tennis for her from further back, whether you're on hard court or clay. OK, so that's fine. So what you go with is depth. Have a look at that. That was that last one. Have a look. She's already falling back. Right? So that body weight's going back. And then she opens that up, and that's where the ball flies. Wow. 
So for me, service to machines just outside the top 50 now has been as high as 32 in the world. But for me, look, the way that she competes, fights, smooth, she can be top 30, no problem, easy. So the next step would be, how do I in general get more depth on my shots? And I would especially work on that with the forehand because she's got that speed and heaviness with it. And that would really help her if she can consistently get the depth, the height and heaviness in rallies and then throughout the whole match. I think that's the next step for her. Well, Elaine, all she needs to do to take that next step is to watch this match back yeah. and listen to your commentary. You've, got, well, You've no. given her an instructional video. Well, there. she's got exhibit A on the other side there, and a, a, a better example than me talking about it. But thank you, Catherine. Nice. Very nice. She's not necessarily a winner machine. Even anyway, even the matches she does win, that's just not her trade, is it? She no. she does things the hard way, but she'll take the easy ones where she can get them. Good commitment. Well, love 30 becomes 40-30. 40, 30. She's made of gritty stuff, Sara Saribes Tormo. She will not lie down. They make them tough in Spain, don't yeah, they? Danger. What's in the water over there? <laughs> and, and you know what? Uh, I mean, it's one of those worst type of players you play. You go, well, he's never going, going away <laughs> <laughs> before you even get out there. You know, it's in your head. Again, just digging those heels in, Cerebes Tormo, but Svantec, a match for it. And, and yes. look at that depth of shot there on that down the line. But, you know, you talk about how do you get there. What nice wide base. That back knee was almost down to the ground. Strong off the legs, the trajectory of the, over the net. But the shoulder and hip rotation and the way that she follows through all the way to the target doesn't come off the ball until she actually completely hits it keeps it on the string as long as possible. Beautiful. Whoever can get uh, a slow-mo of that last back end, that's a master class. That is just textbook. She's showing off now, Shriontek. Created another break point. Showing off on uh, both wings. Lovely cross-court backhand there to open up the court. She's got such different techniques on the two wings, doesn't she? Yeah, she does. But there's, for me, there's no one in the world that deals with a mid-court and short ball better than Shriontek. The way that she comes up to it, but also you, she barely ever misses that shot, even under pressure. She's got phenomenal placement, whether it's depth or angle. Why I say that is that I, I, I really believe 
that a lot of effort, not just now, uh, since she's been on the tour, but when she was younger as well, was put onto that type of tennis, to play that type of tennis and to learn how to really deal with the short balls, where she's going to hit it, because you never see her in two minds. Sometimes you can see that with players. She knows exactly what, what she wants to do. It's almost like it's very automatic. To be able to do that consistently and under pressure, you really have had to practice that a lot. Little unlucky there. Another break point to face. It's just an onslaught, isn't it? Actually, nothing wrong with that point that Tomo played, but you can see she's trying to go for more because yeah. that's the pressure from the other side of the court to, to try and hit a better and better shot and go for the lines. And that's where you start to overplay. The idea is right, though. I have to give credit to Cerebus Tormo, regardless of what the scoreline is. There's always a fist pump, there's always some jumping around, there's always looking towards the player's zone. She's a real fighter. It's the threat of the Shuntek return, isn't it? Sure is. That's what we said early on in the match. Starts to pay dividends, doesn't it? Especially later on in the match and under pressure. That pressure just doesn't go away. Break point number three in this game. Incoming. have caught the line but just long I think she's not happy with herself on that is she you see there she just <laughs> lifted up out of that one a little bit just got a little too straight too early on opened up that left shoulder but that's as angry as she as she'll get <laughs> Relatively conservative point from Shontek there, not going for the outright winner, but just the depth and heaviness doing the damage and creating break point number four. So 
Catherine, we talked about the Shiontek return and how early she mm. takes it, but have a look at uh, this placement of her return and look at the 64% in that red area and that is relatively there. That's the safe area. Still 36% she'll go for it there, but nothing too much. But she's still getting so many free points and that's what we talk about when we say she takes it early, but she doesn't take too much risk. She's ripping it but the safety is there. But you do that by taking the ball early. You make me feel, Yelena, like I'm learning so much that next time I step on a tennis court, I'm, I'm going to be Iga Schwiltek. But um, <laughs> I, I rather fear <laughs> I might be delusional. <laughs> What a hold this would be if she can take this point, Cerebez Tormo. Yeah. What a hold it is. She might well shake that racket. That's trademark Zara Cerebez Tormo there, hanging Why in. Amazing. A lot of credit has to go to Serbis Toma because this match ha has been a lot closer than the scoreline shows. And that game, 12 minutes and 49 seconds, but we've been out here for an hour and seven minutes. It's still only a set and one all. That We've had long games, long rallies, and it's been a lot closer than the scoreline shows. Oh, you called it, didn't you, from what Cerebez Tormo was saying after her last match, that she might beat me, but I'm going to make her stay out there as long as possible to do it. Absolutely. And in that last game, Cerebez Tormo almost just flattening her shots out a little bit too and giving a different look to Sviantec. She obviously has the ability to hit the high heavy balls, but it was nice to see her just change it up a little bit and, and give Sviantec a little bit of a different look. Add that in with her fighting spirit and she's back in this second set. So after that first point there, Shriontek pointed to the umpire and that was that she needed a drink. And we saw her just take a little bit of extra time in that previous game. So Daria, her mental coach, straight away went out there and put some water on her side of the court there where her towel is. Presumably, Elena, it won't just be water. There'll be some yeah. magic, magic stuff in there. Well, as, as, as magic as you can get. <laughs> electrolytes, <laughs> uh, energy drink, something. Hey, electrolytes get me through a lot of days. <laughs> hey! Come on! Shontek's turn to fight. Yeah. So, right here, this was after the first point. So she points to the umpire, as well as a team, that she needs some water then for someone to bring that to her, to her side of the court. Yeah, it's hot out there, folks. No, no, I could almost see that coming. 
I think it was a little bit of sun, but also she jumped too early as well for that one. Completely mishit it, took her eye off the ball. That's why she hit the frame there at the top and the left arm collapsed. Also, she was too front on. You've got to be side on. Otherwise, you collapse and bring the ball down into the net. to hold though a shake of the fist from Shriantek this time we're on serve but the pole leads 2-1 Now, the heat is an interesting one, isn't it? Because this is a bit of a magic stadium here in Perth where there is some sort of unfathomable air conditioning for the crowd in the stands, which is just wonderful in terms of comfort watching the game. But out there on the court in the heat of the sun, it's a completely different story. It sure, it sure is. While everyone else around the stadium might be cool, the players are not. And you can see with Iga as well. You can see the heat. You can see the top right there. It is completely drenched. Yeah, she, she she's feeling the heat, isn't yeah. she? It is. Uh, it's a scorcher. It's a very dry heat here in Perth today, and and generally that tends to be the case. It is the air conditioning you get in the stands comes up from the bottom. It really is magic, but uh, not something the players experience. I mean, she's very well able to cope with it, Iga Shvantec, but it is, it's a feature of the Aussie summer, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. doesn't matter how fit you are. You'll, you know, you'll be feeling that heat. And the good thing is, though, she's very aware of that. And even to go, OK, can I get, you know, if I need it, if this turns into a long game, can I have the water or the sports drink there, which is a good idea. And we saw there on the change of ends as well, a lot of drinking and even taking some sports bars and sports gels, just making sure... Italy. that she's hydrated preventing it's, it's a prevention of cramps as well from it doesn't come from you know not being fit but it's more how much of you're sweating and you lose a lot of those minerals and so you're going to be taking those electrolytes in yeah the more muscle mass you have the more prone to cramping you are so it's not always about fitness Low. Loose start to the game. So the challenge for Cerebro's Tomo is whether she can stay in here with Sviantec. Sviantec in the first set lifted her level after that fifth game. Can almost expect that to happen now. Just didn't move the feet enough there, Cerebro's Tomo. Can't afford to give those away. Not to this woman, anyway. 15.30, an opening, perhaps, for the world number one. That's that uh, 15, return and the return hit point, especially in a second serve. And if it's slower and shorter, that one only 114 Ks an hour. And look at that big target again. She didn't go for the lines, doesn't take the unnecessary risk. Net for service.
It's a gorgeous and shot, that cross-court backhand, well isn't it? It does feel like she could hit that all day long. What I love with that backhand as well Jean is Bonnelli that angle that she one. gets when she goes through the service line and uses the width of the court, which she does often. So you, as a player, you don't just move horizontally there. It's hard to cut off that angle as well. Felt like it was coming, didn't it? There is the break. Is that the damn burst for Saribes Tormo? She won't go anywhere, that's for sure. Wow. She's doing well to even get a racket on these. Yeah. But Sarah Silverstorm was just getting pushed back behind the baseline. And we know that that's the type of tennis she's going to play a little bit further back. But have a look at this. This is Torma Rally hit point. And have a look at where she is the majority of the time. And at times, that's even three, four metres back behind the baseline. And again, same thing, but it was done with the depth and the heaviness of the shot. And let's have a look at it again here. And, and those were those last two points. That's what Shriontek does. So she pushes you back with the depth, but she's also got so much topspin and that heaviness that you almost have to go back unless you're really someone that has a big shot, big game. You got the height, you got the physicality. That's why I said for Cerebus Toma, with time to just go to the next level, developing especially the forehand, to be heavier and deeper would prevent that a little bit. Clever little oh, approach oh, there oh. from Schwiontek. That is superb, actually, because she had to improvise. She made a change here from the extreme forehand grip. She went to a continental to be able to slice this lower forehand right here. Have a look. And she moves forward together with the shot and also cuts off the angle on the volley, the little drop one there. Well done. Preparing for the doubles. Yes. <laughs> It is looking like that Jean doubles Pollard. will be crucial in this Group A tie. Shontek moves to just two games from taking it to a deciding rubber. So these last two games are a perfect example of Shontek lifting her level and almost asking Saruba's Tormo whether she can stay there with her. It's pretty identical to what happened in that first set after that fifth game. Yeah, she's just got levels, hasn't she? Gears that she can move through, Iga Svantec. Starting her 84th week at world number one today. Who do you think Elena will be her biggest rival this season? Look, I loved what we saw in 2023. Really came down to that last uh, match between her and uh, Sabalenka at the WTA finals in the semis. And she had to win that and, and had to beat Pegula in the final as well. So I think it will be Sabalenka, Rybakina and Goff for me. Did you see any of Osaka in Brisbane earlier? Uh, yes, I did. I, I, I love the fact that she's back. I've, I've said it straight away when I saw that she was. It's magnificent. And uh, what a great win as well. It's not easy 
to do that from a confidence perspective, oh, a new no. mum as well, uh, but also just even the match fitness to come out and, and, and play a full match. Great to see her back. And look, I know this is a big if I'm about to say, but yeah. if she can re refine the level yeah. of two or three years ago, she yeah. could she could be a rival for Shionte. Yeah, Surely. of course. We're just talking about what we're seeing, you know, right now. I don't think that that's quite going to happen in, let's say, the next the, the next few months or the next six months. You've got, don't forget, was Niaki. She's coming back, had a good come back also gets to the fourth round of the US Open pushes Goff to three sets who ended up winning so a lot can happen this year we kind of got to go off the form I think in the last three to six months I don't mind that play. It was a perfect ball to come in on. The approach shot was good. So rest time I did well to keep that low. But that is the part of the game for Sriontek that she'll want to develop moving forward. Being able to come forward, being able to come to the net and take advantage of her ground strokes. Right here, though, just lost a little bit of control. Didn't get her right foot there in time. It's interesting because when she first came on tour, Riga Shviontek, and in the juniors, she did deploy a lot of variety in the game. But as she's sort of been at the top of, of the sport and she's developed that aggression, she hasn't needed to use it so much. But she did say at points last year that she wanted to rework it into well, her game. I, I, I personally think we're already seeing her take the ball out of the air more often and look for a shorter ball. And, and look at that winner. She'll do that against 90% of the tour. So sometimes you're almost 18, a little bit like, 13. I'm going to make a conscious effort here to come forward because you're hitting a lot of winners in your matches without having to come forward. But against players like Sabalenka, Rybakina, Goff, and players that can also bring in power, you need that variation, especially if you're maybe not having a great day and playing well. Not a lot that Shiontek, uh, that Cerebus Tormo can do about this right now from Shiontek. 14. Utter dominance from the world number one. Two more break points. If she takes them, she'll be serving for it. It is a constant barrage now from the racket of Iga Swiatek and a 5-1 lead. She will serve to take this tie into a deciding doubles. She's done such a good job, Swiatek, of exposing Cerebus Tormo, especially out wide off that forehand. It's been so consistent in this second set. She has to do through this Tormo now. She's got nothing to lose. May as well go out swinging. Have a crack. She's got a nice uh, backhand down the line, hasn't she, when she connects with it like that? Not the most powerful, but... She was in position, wasn't she? Yeah, a lovely shot. Hey, 
Pitinol. Just her second of the match. It's been a good serving day for Svantec. 62% first serves in, 71% won. A few aces, always nice. Down the other line, on the other wing. She heard you, Buana. <laughs> well, I just think, why not? You're six. You're set and five-one down. Might as well give yourself the opportunity. No pressure. Go out swinging. go down as an ace that one but as good as two points away now Done so much damage with that into out backhand. 40, it's a deadly weapon. And it's brought up match point for Świątek and Poland. The 6-2, 6-1 scoreline suggests a gritty fight from Sara Saribes Tormo, but job done for Iga Świątek and Team Poland. She takes us into a decisive mixed doubles, which, Boyana, is what the United Cup is all about. It sure is, Kath, and looking forward to what that mixed doubles will present. But you touched on it, and I think you hit the nail on the head there when you said Despite what the scoreline says, 6 2 6 1, it was not an easy match for Sviantek. She was made to work and she had moments of unforced errors and maybe losing a little bit of rhythm, but she found a way. She sure did. And she will now speak to Yelena, who's down courtside. Iga, congratulations. Great match. You only lost three games, but it looked like it was a lot closer than that. Yes, for sure. You know, we, we played even, you know, longer than the score says and it was much more tough for sure. Uh, it's always like that against Sarah. So I'm happy that I was patient and really used my chances. Uh, but for sure, it wasn't an easy match. Now, uh, it is pretty warm out here. You had some long points, long rallies. How did you feel with the heat? Um, for sure, you know, I had to adjust because at the beginning the balls were flying a little bit more crazy than two days ago. Uh, but, you know, that's how it is in Australia. Uh, it's a great preparation before uh, a Grand Slam and uh, for sure, yeah, you need to kind of think a little bit more and not rush it and choose the right uh, shots to, to play more aggressively. Now, we've got a live mixed doubles coming up. You'll be back out here. Uh, you played mixed doubles the other night, uh, even though it was a dead rubber. Will that match have helped you for today? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, any, any time I play mixed doubles, you know, it's a kind of a lesson for the future because I'm not playing a lot of mix, I mean, doubles at all. So uh, it's a great practice and I can, you know, um, I don't know, use different skills and feel a little bit more ge the geometry of the court. And playing with Hubi is also a great experience because he's an experienced doubles player. So I'm pretty excited okay. to have a chance to do that. I'll let you go. Go get ready. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. Iga Sviantek. A geometry lesson <laughs> incoming for Igor Svantec 
the world number one. She will team up with Hubert Herkatch, who won his men's singles, or rather, who lost his men's singles earlier on today to Alejandro Davidovich Fikina. Shontek winning there, of course, levels up the tie. And into the mixed doubles we go, where it's, we expect it to be Cerebes Tormo alongside Davidovich Fikina and then Shontek and Herkatch teaming up. They're undefeated in mixed doubles, but I'll tell you what, I watched Cerebes Tormo and Davidovich Fakina in mixed doubles a couple of days ago, and Davidovich Fakina in particular was very impressive indeed. So it could be very fun. Shontek's going to be hard to beat, though, even on a doubles court if she plays anything like she did today. Certainly from two all in the first set onwards. Impressive numbers for her. Most of those unforced errors came in the early stages of that first set. Once she mopped them up, well, it was one-way traffic for the world number one. Good fight from this young woman, but just not enough firepower against the weaponry of this young woman. What a force she is in the sport. Iga Świątek wins her singles. Can she get the job done for Team Poland in the mixed doubles? We will find out very shortly indeed.